guys, welcome back to another part of my How to Fight Like a Viking series. Um, if you haven't already seen part one, uh, please do. It's, uh, well, it's my sense of humour at least anyway. It's me having a bit of fun and kind of taking the piss, I suppose, in many respects. But um, not only will it give you a laugh, it does touch upon some of the basic principles of what I will be going over in this video in regards how the Vikings may have fought with a two-handed axe in the old days. Um, now, the reason why I say may have is because, well, it was a thousand years ago, and regardless of how many texts you read and all the rest of it and different historical sources you go to, um, history is, on the large, pretty much speculation, isn't it? It's sort of guesswork on how things were done. And, of course, back then, a thousand years ago, when the Vikings were you know, predominantly raiding the coasts of Europe and uh, uh, well, predominantly the coasts of Europe, um, these guys were feared very rightfully so because they were not just fighters they were the fighting elite of the scandinavians at the time uh, not every scandinavian um was a viking it was only a certain proportion of their society that did go on the raid and every single one of the vikings were battle hardened tested in battle and um, had been training for God knows how many years and seen active combat. So they knew their stuff. And this is really me just showing you the basics and how they may have handled a two-handed axe. Okay? Um, the two-handed axe did exist at the time. It was called a Dane axe and was wielded not only by the Vikings, but also the elites of the Saxon society also. Um, uh, this is not a Dane axe, this is just a tall axe. I'm not rich enough to be able to buy a real battle axe. But, nonetheless, it will, it's good enough to show you some of the basic techniques that they may have used. Now, the first thing to know about um, how to hold or wield uh, well, uh, a two-handed axe is how to hold it first. There's no point trying to swing an axe unless you know how to hold it to start off with. Um, and the first thing to do is to know, as a result, where to put the hands. Now, you have a dominant hand, which for me is my right hand. I am right-handed, so my dominant hand is my right hand, this hand here, and my off hand is my left hand, that's my non-dominant side. Now, your off hand, whichever one it is for you, should always go at the bottom of the axe shaft and grip it fairly tightly. Um, not super tight, but uh, tight enough not to lose your grip. You want some degree of looseness so you can use your wrist to increase the power of the attack. Now, your off hand is perhaps more important than your dominant hand, believe it or not, when wielding a, any form of two-handed weapon because it stabilizes the weapon and acts as a leverage point for developing power for the attack and the strike. However, your dominant hand is what's going to be doing the sort of min fine manipulation and the dexterity work of the attack. And it's going to be guiding where the attack goes, okay? And is as itself, rightfully just as important. Typically, your dominant hand will not go right beneath the axe head here, even though that is a valid place to put your hand from time to time, so you can make fast and um, precise movements you can even swap the axe around like that so you can hit them or go like this. And with your hand just beneath the axe blade or the axe head, that is very easily done. In fact, this axe, I can't feel it at all. And this is quite a heavy axe. It is a, an axe used to cut down trees, in essence. So by me having my hand here, I can negate what is already a heavy axe down to very, very light. I can swing this all day long and not get tired. That's one advantage of putting your hand here. However, there is a big disadvantage by having your hand really far down towards the axe blade, and that is your dominant hand or arm is swinging in large range mo movements. So that does make strong attacks difficult. It feels cumbersome, it feels hard. Even though it makes the axe light, it is difficult still to attack. In fact, you have to keep the axe quite close to you and use this leverage mo mo movement from both hands to be able to get anything effective off. Um, instead, it's far more efficient to bring your hand a little bit further down. In essence, the further up the shaft your dominant hand, the faster the strike and the lighter the actual feel, but the weaker and sometimes more cumbersome the attack will feel. But as you bring it down, the stronger the attack will become, but the heavier the axe will become. And in essence, in, as well as this, 
even though it kind of is the same as what I said about putting your hand up right up to the top, again, it makes the attack more cumbersome. It makes making a very accurate strike very difficult. And also, it's potentially more dangerous to you and those around you as well, because you've really got to swing it like this. You've got to swing it all the way around your body to get a, an attack. And if you miss, you've just got to keep going rather than stop it, or you can change direction. So if I was to attack you from this side, miss, I can bring it over like this again, or like this, but it is very hard to do that when down here. And so, like most things, balance is key. And keeping your hand somewhere in the middle is probably the best way, because you can be quick, but powerful, all at the same time. Um, and you can still attack with a pommel like this, and you can do a variety of, uh, of angles of attack, okay? Now, keeping it like this, as you can see, attacking from this side is possible, but it is a little awkward and crosses your hands. And so if you want to attack from the left a little bit easier, you can actually just swap your hands, a bit like, like I did there. Okay, and the way that you do that is you take the hand at the bottom of the shaft and slide it up, just like that. Okay, nice and easy, and you can change the grip of the hand. But predominantly, if you're right-handed, you'll be like how I am now. And there's no problem coming in like this. Uh, rather than going like that and then like that. It's a bit more awkward, but if you just want to swap things around, um, that is one valid thing to do. It's just, you can change the guard. In fact, it's quite a, a useful technique in many ways. Now, in addition to, you know, actually swinging at the opponent, you need to take into account that a two-handed weapon is as dangerous to you, if wielded incorrectly, as it is to your opponent. And that is because, because of the length, especially if your hands are more down here like a baseball bat, because of the length, if you miss or you hit your opponent so hard you go through your opponent, the blade will continue and because of its length can actually strike you as well. Unfortunately, I can't put my legs on the camera because the camera angles are a little bit weird. But if I was to miss going overhead like this and not stick into my opponent, then the axe will come and actually cut me straight in the leg just beneath the knee. That is not good. That is a bad thing indeed. And so the way that you, way, when you swing an axe, you must be not only aware of what your opponent is doing and your environment around you, you must also be very aware of what you are doing. And every time you attack, even though people say that swords are a much more precision tool and, and more skillful weapon, I'm sorry, but an axe you have to be skillful to use because if not, you are going to hurt yourself. Um, possibly more likely to hurt yourself than you are the enemy, in fact, in, a, in an old battlefield situation. So when you strike, you must always, in, uh, as a, in the olden days, you would have had to have come at a slight angle so that when you miss, the axe blade goes to your side. So wham, like this, okay? Wham, or like this. So that way, you've got a swinging motion to help you keep the momentum of the axe because of course it's heavy and the last thing you want to do is stop it in mid, mid, mid attack and swip it like that. It's not a sword. You can't do that so easily. You can if you've got a bit of strength, but it is slow and cumbersome. It's not the best thing to do. It's better just to follow the blade around and then bring it back. It's far less tiring to do that. In addition to that, because you're going to the side, it's more of a cleaving action and you are protecting yourself, providing you miss. But there are other things you can do. And this allows you to not only gain territory from an opponent, push them back, but it also is very useful defensively. And what I mean by this, I'll touch on the defensive side of things first, is when you're wielding any two-handed weapon, but particularly an axe, you are vulnerable to an enemy attacking you because you can't use a shield with a two-handed weapon and you can't really parry that well with an axe. You can, and I will get into that later, um, but you cannot parry to the same degree that you can with a sword. And so as a result, you're a very vulnerable target. If the enemy attacks you, they can hit you very easily indeed. And protect yourself, first of all, first and foremost, you would have worn armor. Vikings in the old days, they used to wear chain mail. Um, the mass majority of them. And chainmail is very, very protective indeed if you get a good set, which of course you would have um, if your life depended upon it. Um, and yes, an axe would still hurt you if the enemy was swinging an axe back at you, but chainmail would protect you against um, a wide range of attacks. 
but the best form of defense is not to get hit to start off with and as i said this actually helps you not only attack but it does help you get away from the opponent or put your opponent on the back foot so they can't attack you and for example the first stepping attack that you can do is as you attack you bring the same the foot on the same side that you're attacking from with the blade okay with the axe head okay so i'm attacking from the right so i'm bringing my my right foot forward and that brings me forward twists me in such a way that my left leg is out of the way of the axe if i miss but also brings the body weight of my attack into the blow also allowing it to cleave through armor far more effectively as well as that i've just gained best part of two and a half three foot of territory from you and the reason I say I've gained territory from you is it's very rare <laughs> in any ancient battlefield to find a warrior willing to stand in the way of an axe being swung at them full pelt from, you know, a murderous psychopath essentially, um, which is what, how the Vikings were often viewed by their enemies. And so if I'm swinging at you, it's unlikely that you're going to stand there and try and take it on your shield or to try and parry it because the weight of the axe is especially with a two-handed axe, is substantial enough to either just smash your short sword out of the way and hit you regardless, or even potentially go through the shield and into your arm, okay? Or if not, it's, even if it doesn't go through the shield, if you've got a good quality shield, um, shields were quite, quite protective, it's still going to be a big foot and it's going to hurt. And so most of the time, people, as long as they're not in formation and they're as a result, unable to back off, they will back off. And so when a Viking would have swung at you, he could have followed it up, but as he's just gained territory, he could have followed that motion of attacking, like I've just described before, where you swing the axe, but this time combining it with footwork. Now, if he thinks you're attacking back, this technique can also be very defensive. As you can see, I'm able to attack, and I'm doing it slowly just for purposes, but you can attack quite quickly still, on the attack and the defense just by using your footwork and of course you can also do the same thing side to side and you can keep your way out of the opponent whilst keeping a flurry of attacks coming in now the other thing that a viking would have done with his axe he, he would have understood that the killing end of the axe is not only the, the, not the only dangerous part of an axe so the killing part is the, the bit that is bladed here so I've got covered with rubber just for safety at the moment. Okay. Um, but he could have used the butt of the axe head and just gone boom like this straight into you. Okay. Or he could have done the same with the axe shaft. Bang. Sort of preemptive spear so to speak. Or he could have done it almost like a quarter staff going across like here hitting you again with the shaft. And the advantage of these is one, they've got quite a good range to them. They can take your opponent by surprise if they're attack thinking you're going to attack like this, but then you just switch it and go into, into a pommel strike essentially, shaft strike, bang, almost. So you, they think you're going to swing, but bang, you're coming in instead. They think you're going to swing, bang, that kind of attack. For example, or say you miss, you haven't got time to bring it back. You can just go boom like that instead and keep them away so every part of the axe is dangerous and just like the crazy viking in the previous video i showed you even the shaft itself say you're up close and personal with an opponent they are too close to use their sword you're too close to swing your axe okay um daggers can be used at this point but instead if you've got an axe you can just ram this straight into them like that it's a very good push and away create the distance and when they got the distance bang hitting with the axe that way. It's a great and versatile weapon. More advanced techniques, of course, would include um, using the fact that an axe, normally a battle axe, is a bit more hook shaped than this. Okay, it will have a point coming down, which will allow you to essentially come in low and drag the leg away. So if you can hook the leg, or even hook the arm, if you have to come, say you, you took a swing, the axe blade missed, and kind of their arm was here or their body was here, you can drag them across and when they're here, bang, finish them off. And so you can drag with the axe, which is something no sword can do. No sword tomb can be used to drag you along or drag a part of your body out of position. You can do it with shield, drag the shields, bang, once it's out of the way, 
in an over the top. And that's one other thing that an axe would be more useful for than a sword. Going over the top of a shield. The shield might block it, but the axe head will still kind of get over the shield. So this is a shield here, and clip the person possibly behind. So these were dangerous weapons when used correctly. As I say, the battle axes were far more um, far more effective than this. This is, this is a tool, this is not a weapon, this is a tool. But the weaponized version of an axe would be lighter, so you could swing it faster, and it would be longer, so you've got greater reach. Um, I think I've basically covered all the basics on how an axe could be used both aggressively, but also potentially to get out of the way. Aggression is used both on the attack and the defense. The only other last thing to mention is, of course, an axe is not a fragile item. Okay, it's still here, and all of this traditionally would have been a hardened wood of some form. It's fiberglass on this, right? But it would have been a hardened wood, and that is hard to cut through, even with another axe. Okay, but if your opponent's wielding a sword and they're making an overhead strike and you can't get out of the way because you're in formation or because you've sinked too late, you can still bang, put that out and use it as a very good block against a sword attack. Same again, the side, block, block, okay? And when you've blocked it, bang, you can come back in. So the axe man would have been able to defend himself but more often than not, the, the best form of defense for an axe would be an attack, because as I said before, most people are not gonna stand in the way of a Viking swinging an axe at you, or Saxon, because Saxons use them as well. Okay, um, the only other thing is to mention, and that's all the techniques to mention there, guys, so if you're only watching this video for techniques, then please go now, don't feel like you have to hang around. This is a bit more history in the old days, obviously, there were house coals, essentially, which were predominantly Saxon, but the Vikings used them as well. And these would be formations of men similar to myself, big and strong. They'd be veterans. They'd be armoured with the very best armour that uh, they, they themselves or their lord could afford. And they wielded Dane axes. They were the ones who typically wielded the Dane axe, which was a two-handed axe. And what they did was, obviously, they'd fight in formation. And when you were in formation, you can't really swing so much when, the, when your mates are right next to you. So instead of swinging sideways, and if you held it close to, to there, so you could go like this without hitting your, your friend, instead, what you would do is all together, you would do overhead strikes, strike, strike. You imagine, you know, eight, 10, well, a good 10 men wide formation at least, if not wider, depending on how wide the shield wall was of big men like me coming in, bang, bang, you know, all of us in close formation with the best armour, which is hard to penetrate. We don't care if you attack us, our armour is probably going to protect us. Going like this, it would have been a scary thing to go up against. But other than that, guys, um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it informative. Health and safety, guys. Obviously, this is not me encouraging you to practice these techniques, but if you do decide um, to do this on your own accord, be it, on, be it on your own head, so to speak. But please, safety first, guys, safety first. Make sure the axe blade, If well, first of all, use a fake axe, either a, a wooden uh, replica or foam or some kind of plastic replica. Or, if you can only get the real thing, make sure the blade is covered. Make sure you understand where your legs are because you don't want to strike yourself. But more importantly as well, make sure there's no one else in the room. Okay, um, that, uh, certainly if they don't know that you're fighting or practicing fighting techniques, do not let anyone else be around you because the last thing you want to do is practice you swinging like this, your girlfriend comes in, doesn't realize what you're doing, you, you hit her, yeah, it's going to be messy, guys. So please, guys, safety first, always. Um, other than that, guys, thank you very much, and I'll see you soon.